Hello everyone, this is my uh, screencast demo for um, the studio class. Um, of course, it's about NetBeans. Um, I'm basically going to ju just show the tools, show a couple of the uh, properties of it with a small Hello World application, some of the debugs as uh, NetBeans is not really as intuitive as um, other IDEs. It's a little bit heavier to use if you looked at it. And um, basically what I'm going to be showing you is first how to create a simple application in NetBeans, make it run with the default packages that comes in NetBeans, and then I'm going to show you something about the directory structure. And then I am going to um, work and create a default application uh, with default packages, because sometimes you could get default packages and application without packages with Java files that you want to run alone under a specific package. Um, that has no name, basically. So let's start by uh, creating a new Java application. It's just going to be nothing but a whole world. I mean, of course, you have the new project Java application, and you just choose a hello world. Um, or let's call it hi this time. So, hi, application, and now. Uh, project is created as you can see they called it they put in the default package called hi and they created a main class for you to work with so under the main class all you have to do is system dot out dot print line this is a test of the screencast and semicolon and we go ahead and run our application as you can see it's set as a default project sometimes you it will not be set as a default project so sometimes you would have to go and set as a main project for you to run it um, as long as it's set as the main project and you have a main method inside all you have to do is press the play button and there you go your output is actually shown on the screen um, um, next, sometimes, you know, um, you get a project without packages and you want to just add files with a default package. So in order to do that, all you have to do is go here and delete this package. Once you delete it, um, just say safely delete, just for safe, to make sure everything is fine. It will just put something called the default package. And inside the default package, what you have to do is go new class. And let's say class um, no package is what I'm going to call it. So now this is our class with no package. Okay, and of course it doesn't have a main method, so we're going to go and uh, void main arcs string arcs. Array args, and then we're going to close it, and then we're going to open and close brace. And of course, inside we're going to go do the and go do the same thing. Sorry about the exception. And we're going to go with the system dot out dot print line. Again, system dot system. Out and this is no package class. And of course, it's going to be the main product. Since there's a main product in here, all you have to do is press play. See, it's giving you an issue because it's not set as default project. Um, it is uh, actually it is set as default project, but since there's no method main method file in there you have to give it a running point for the application to run so you can press the button and make it run. You can also do right click on it and go to run file and run file um, should be able to run it sadly it's <laughs> not doing that. Uh, reason is um, pretty much it cannot see my main file and um, it needs to see a main method though to tell you the truth something is with the main here and let's do an F3 main 
see it's just public static void main. Forgot to add my public static in here, and here we go. And now it should run safely. So go ahead and run. Oh, still doesn't like it. So run file now. It just ran it because you right-click and said run file. In order to rectify this and just really pre, uh, press the play button and make it run, you have to click customize. Again, sorry, you have to go run, and then you have to say run file, and it will run it. Else, you can set the configuration, go to customize. And under customize, you can simply set the main project as no package. This is our main class that's going to run the application. Now you press play and it runs perfectly and everything looks good. <clears throat> Next is something that we could do. Uh, NetBeans is not as good as other IDEs when it comes to debugging. I mean, Eclipse is a little bit better. Visual Studio is usually the best or what I prefer, I mean. But you can get pretty much what you want from here. So let's define um, Three variables an int called variable an int called int one equals zero int two int int two which equals some number which is one. Now we just like run a small for loop for int i equals zero while i is less than I plus plus. Hmm. Now we'll call this int add both, which equals zero. So this will basically just increment and add these two values to each other. So add both. Plus equals whatever values and add both is going to be i plus i plus int one plus int two. Also, we're going to add another statement i int is going to equal int equal i multiplied by 2. So every time it goes in, it will still assign the value to it. So we'll go with it plus equals. So we run this now, and we're going to go ahead and print line. I'm going to say add both is equal to plus add both. And now we run this and we see that add both gives us this. Now we want to run and debug this since we don't have a debugger's console. And um, if you want to check how to check what inside the value, the, the variables you want to know while it's going through the loop, this is what you do. Um, you just say debug main project. Um, now the debugger is running, as you can see down here, and it stopped here. While it's doing that, you can just hover over anything, any variable, and it will tell you what this variable is. Or you can run through the loop and see the updated variable. It was zero a minute ago, and now it's one. And n2 right now is one, but then after it's multiplied by two, after this pass, it's going to change into three. So keep on going, and now it's still at three, one more pass, it's going to be seven now. And so it's going to add them one by one, and it will tell you exactly what's going on in the loop. At some point, you want to evaluate the code, because the statement actually, if you hovered over it, you will not get the results, and you want to get whatever is inside the variable just by typing it, which is closer to the immediate window when you work with Visual Studio. <clears throat> and in order to do that, you just type in here, um, Basically, in order for you to get this window, you have to go to debug, and then evaluate code, evaluate expression. Evaluate expression will bring up this screen down here. Um, under this screen, all you have to do is type i, dot, for example. And by the way, like the code completion does work in here. 
So if you want to see what's inside this variable, let's say it one, you just press evaluate this expression, you go to variables, and you will see that your result just appeared right here. Or let's say, let's take another example. Right now we want to go back, just click back on the code for you to go back and click add underscore both enter and then evaluate this expression once this happens you can actually see that the result inside it is six which is which matches this sometimes you know you want to evaluate an expression before you put it in code and you want to get an immediate response so let's say if a if add both is less than int number two and you want to evaluate this expression see if it will actually pass you just press I just press this and I want to go to the variables and see it's null that means this whatever I put in here is incorrect and the reason is the reason could be something wrong in in my um, syntax it could be the fact that I'm not supposed to put an F in here but if you want to evaluate like a small expression like this and just press play. Let's see if we can actually evaluate this. See, the value is true now. So you cannot just put the operator statement in there. And right now we just got a true because um, add both is actually less than in two. So this is the debug. Right now, finally, I'm going to go through how to get the class code, um, the project code, actually, my mistake. Um, from our VM machines, which is something that we use all the time um, in order to increment projects. The simplest way to do this is to go to team and then under subversion you say check out. Usually it will give you a trouble and it will give you a message asking you to go to a specific website and download the, the tool for Windows. And in order to do that you have to actually go to um, this website that they requested on here, which is the subversion, and it's called call collab dot net. So, and you download the Windows version. After you download it, you make sure it's downloaded by going into the command prompt and typing svn dot minus minus version. Once you do that, you will get <coughs> If you've got results in here, that means everything is running fine. Once you're done with doing this, you will have to go to Tools, Options, Miscellaneous, and then go to Versioning. Once you go to Versioning, choose Subversion, and make sure you put the installation folder of what you installed in here, because this will point to the BIM file executable of SVN, and it will, it will help you work with it. So this is the client that has to work with the actual web application. <coughs> um, and interact with it to download our code. After that, you simply just go to team servers, you go to subversion, and then you check out a code. You put the VM name in here, you log in with your username and password, type next, and it will connect. Okay, once it connects, which I should be connected right now, all you have to do is say check out code and you will get all of our code just like this. And by the way, I mean, since this is working with a lot of JEE um, components and JEE libraries, you might get a lot of errors when you load it. All you have to do is right click and say show and resolve problems this way. It will keep on looking for some dependencies and it will download everything you need into the local IDE and all you have to say is just download libraries. Once it downloads the libraries everything will be fine and you will not see any of the red exclamation points that indicate that you have a problem. This problem has nothing to do with the libraries, it's just talking about implementing the methods. So this is my demo, I hope it helps and I hope it was enough time um, to cover whatever we need in this course. Um, thank you.